I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This reaction is what's known as a Darzen's reaction. A Darzen's reaction is any time you take a ketone or an aldehyde and you react it with an alpha halo ester in the presence of a base to form an alpha beta epoxy ester or also what's known as a glycidic ester and this reaction was first discovered way back in 1904 and this reaction follows a very similar pathway to ones you probably learned about in organic chemistry like enol and enolate formation for aldol condensations or Claisen condensations and the first step in this reaction is to deprotonate one of the alpha carbon hydrogens alpha meaning the carbon adjacent to this carbonyl group in the presence of this base. So ethoxide or sodium ethoxide is a base that we can use to deprotonate that alpha carbon hydrogen position which is going to be more acidic than most carbon hydrogen bonds. So this is going to form an enolate species at this position giving us this overall transformation where now you have this enolate which has been formed at this position. So it's called an enolate because you have this alkene, which is where the ene comes from, and this negatively charged oxygen. And in all of these reactions, what happens next is the electrons, which are now localized around oxygen, will come back down to reform this carbonyl group, making this carbon position a nucleophile because these pi electrons can now come and attack electrophiles like this electrophilic carbonyl carbon position, allowing us to generate a product where we have a new carbon-carbon bond at this position. So the product of this transformation and now we're going to have a negatively charged oxygen from our original acetone molecule. The two methyl groups from acetone are located here, and our new carbon-carbon bond is located at this position. So then we still have our chloro group, because that's where the attachment was at this nucleophilic carbon position. And then we have reformed our ester in the previous step. So we reformed our ester here. We generated a nucleophilic carbon, which attacked this electrophilic carbonyl carbon. And this is where that acetone was added and the new carbon-carbon bond was formed. And then what will happen next is that these electrons now located on this oxygen can come and attack other electrophiles, like for example, this carbon, which is going to serve like a substitution reaction where it kicks off the chloride and generates an epoxide. And in fact, that is the very last step of this reaction. So the first step is deprotonation of an alpha carbon hydrogen through enolate formation that you've probably encountered before. And when you bring down this pi electron to reform your ester, you're generating a nucleophilic carbon where these pi electrons can come attack other electrophiles like ketones or aldehydes. And this is going to allow us to generate this intermediate, which is going to have a negatively charged oxygen, which will attack the adjacent carbon atom and kick off our good leaving group in this chloride in order to generate this alpha beta epoxy ester. And this alpha beta epoxy ester is called that because this would be the alpha position and this would be the beta position. So alpha beta epoxy ester, or also what's known as a glycidic ester. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another mechanism, and I'll see you next Monday.